Well, I mean, it's 204. Let's get started. And Chris, um, as our uh, product manager or chief product officer, um, I guess, is there an overview uh, or, or, you know, what can you tell us about the roadmap that maybe we don't already know? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always some some background, and I can definitely start there if you want to. Um, you know, one of the most important things that you can pay attention to from a business strategy's perspective is really a bear market, right? And that's that's the basis. It's like the bear market essentially flushes out projects that don't have legs and promotes projects that do. Um, so we've been paying very close attention in our you know last nine months of planning. Uh, as we planned out, because we, we we originally put out a roadmap in early 2022 with our 2022 roadmap, but this is really our, you know, looking forward roadmap. This is our business strategies roadmap. This is our initiatives roadmap that we're we're going towards based on a lot of research and a lot of, you know, just attention, close attention being paid to um, successful and you know failed projects. So, um, in general there is a mind share and the entire organization really contributes to it of, you know, projects we know have user growth opportunity and revenue opportunity that aren't necessarily going to be a feature or a capability that will, you know, release in wallet or release, you know, via, you know, web three or, or whatever else, right. The participation with DEXs. Um, those projects are really important um, to initialize. And that's exactly what we're doing with this roadmap. So, you know, vertical SaaS is, um, you know, vertically integrated solutions. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of projects funded um, in that arena over the past year, even during the, the downturn. Um, I mean, you know, MetaMask raised 450 million as a series D round and they focus, they want to focus specifically on this. This is an area that we know is going to be big in the FinTech area. Uh, we're already talking to a number of customers that are interested in integrating our wallet solution into their ecosystem. We've been talking about this for a little while. So this isn't necessarily a project per se. It's an initiative. It's really something much, much larger that will result in smaller bits and pieces of releases and, and you know, customer support partnerships developed out. Um, and that also applies to the interoperability elements of it. So interoperability has always been something that we've been concentrating on um, as a baseline. Uh, we haven't had all the time in the world to integrate all the coins in the world yet, but we're working on it, right? We're, we're trying to map out um, which ones are most valuable in the near term and which ones are most valuable in the long term and trying to find out, you know, what projects we think have, le think have legs and moving forward with that, right? So um, again, this isn't a feature-based roadmap. This is an initiative-based roadmap. Two particular areas that are much more focused, but we've also seen tremendous customer and partnership opportunities in, um, particularly from user growth perspective as well as a revenue perspective. Um, loyalty 2.0. Uh, you've seen you know larger organizations like Starbucks announce a loyalty program that that involves crypto, so or you know involves NFTs essentially. Um, but looking looking at the merging of all these technologies, um, we're focusing on things that we think will drive significant user growth, which then drives subscription growth, which is revenue, and then also, you know, transaction revenue. Um, the transaction revenue we know is going to be a race to zero eventually, um, as all things do. But um, while we're there, we can pick up as many users as possible. And that's where the NFT 2.0 concept, concept comes in as well, because, you know, Josh has been speaking on the initiative of the DeFi protocol for a number of months, and we're really pushing that forward. And that is the basis for a lot of this um, the NFT 2.0 and the loyalty 2.0 initiatives uh, that will enable that. So not to talk about anything too specific, but that gives a, a general overview of what we've been focusing on over the past months as we've been planning out this future looking roadmap from an initiative standpoint. Awesome. Awesome. And, and thank you uh, for that kind of context that, that helps everybody put things in perspective. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find Josh because I think that's a, a. I had a question specifically for him in terms of um, kind of the the DeFi, um, and I don't know if you want to touch on that, but I, that was one of the questions that I think was, you know, I saw a lot on Twitter and and people were discussing is 
you know, we have all these, or at least the roadmap shows, and, and we did get this pinned. It looks really small up there, but, um, <laughs> you know, we have these, these uh, concepts, these ideas and these things, but um, the DeFi protocol is something that we've heard about and it's not on the roadmap. And I was, uh, I think people are curious, like, where does that fit in? Where does that p- piece fit into the, the puzzle? Um, yeah. I don't know if that's something you want to touch on. Yeah, I can, I can expand on it a bit. So it, like, like I alluded to earlier, it's, it's absolutely essential for the vast majority of these, these initiatives to, to, to be realized in the, in whatever they're going to be in the end. Right. And you're looking at kind of a multi-year strategy here. So um, the DeFi protocol enables us to uh, utilize EDV, which we've had for a little while, add utility to EDV and also participate on DEXs, which allows for more interoperability, right? Um, more swap capability, et cetera. Uh, you can be able to participate in pools. You'll be able to participate in staking. Um, so, Essentially, what it does is it expands our um, ability to then pursue things like our NFT 2L concept and our loyalty 2L concept. So it's absolutely fundamental and it is actively being worked on right now. There, it's, you know, it's past the ideation into the design. The design phase is essentially over at this point. We've locked in on, on the, the concept and what it needs to entail from a, a feature and capability standpoint. And now we're really in the, the preparing for execution phase of the DeFi protocol. So most most everything that you saw in our original publication of the 2022 roadmap back in, in earlier in Q1 uh, is either buried within these initiatives or already released. Like, you know, the, you know by uh, Divi in the wallet and, and the other uh, swap capabilities were already released in late May. So um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that's an important aspect that it's already kind of, I wouldn't say it's it's here. It's not like, you know, um, I'm going to unveil it right now, but it, it's something that is not forward thinking. It's, it's kind of now in the moment. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it's a building block that is necessary to kind of evolve into these other things or necessarily yeah. evolve into, but be built upon this foundation that is yeah, the and I think, protocol. I think that's something that, that I could I could continue to try to clarify really is like when we released the the roadmap in earlier 20, early 2022, it was really just more of like a capability roadmap. Like we're adding capabilities to the wallet. We're adding, um, extending utility and so forth for our ERC-20 token, which we call EDV. Um, sorry, I didn't clarify that earlier. Um, so those were really just kind of features or, or higher level capabilities, which are a combination of features. These are initiatives. So if you look at it from the perspective of, of a hierarchy, the initiatives themselves aren't necessarily defined by a capability or a feature. It's a combination of all of those things with an end goal in mind. And that outcome that you were looking for with, with these initiatives particularly are significant user growth and significant re- revenue growth. Um, and basing that on projects you know that we've seen that have failed or succeeded particularly during the bear market is really important to consider so um yeah these this this and i'm hoping all future roadmaps don't go into the feature level um that's that's really not a desire we could break it down into feature components uh and better improve our well right now it's just a blog post but to let everybody know there's we're we're revamping our website right now as well uh, and this will be on our website and um, very readable and extensible uh where we will mention things like this is where the DeFi protocol um, applies itself within these initiatives uh, but really when we publish roadmaps from now on I'd, I'd love to keep it at the initiative level and that's that's the goal of this one and it's not I understand the confusion as well. It's not a 2022 roadmap because 2022 is, I mean, realistically already over from a planning perspective. Um, in my mind, this is really a forward-looking roadmap and utilizing the concept of an initiative in this forward-looking roadmap allows us the flexibility to, you know, slightly pivot ideas and concepts within the NFTO um, <clears throat> original initiative, right? Uh, we may find out in six months that, you know, the direction we were going was wrong and we'll need to pivot, but the, the, the focus is still there and the outcome, the desired outcome is still there, which is user growth and revenue growth. So, Awesome. And, and I want to, I want to make sure that if anybody else has any questions, you know, for, for Chris specifically, 
Um, you raise your hand if you're not on stage. If you're already on stage, um, you know, wait for a, a, a down second and, and jump in because I don't want to make this a, a, a discussion between me and Chris. I want this to be, you know, the community. Everybody's invited. So I have a couple questions um, that, that, you know, I could ask, but I wanted to take this opportunity to open it up. Was there anybody else that uh, had a question? <laughs> it's that crazy monkey guy. <laughs> um, well, I'll jump in real quick. Um, Chris, you already mentioned this a couple of times, but I think it's really, really important for anybody evaluating this roadmap um, to, to really think about how it is an initiative-based roadmap, not a feature-based roadmap. Um, and with and you said that that's kind of how you envision the roadmaps moving forward to to look as well as just um, highlighting initiatives rather than features. Um, with that in mind, how often do you think there will be roadmap updates, and how long do you think these initiatives will stay on the roadmap? Because they seem like very kind of um, like goals that could be continued to be built upon for a long time. So I'm just curious kind of what the evolution of the roadmap will look like and how frequently it will be updated. Yeah. I mean, not to give any timelines out at all. Um, I think the goal of having the initiative roadmap is number one to focus on our, our core outcomes, like I mentioned, but then also to make sure that we are, deploying and releasing regularly with features and capabilities that relate to it. So um, for instance, the DeFi protocol, like I said, is at the start of the execution phase um, that will be announced and it will be announced in such a way that says, okay, this now allows us to support our NFT 2O and our loyalty 2O initiatives. And this is where we're going next. So it'll be the roadmap itself will be literally just a guide and then the rest will be um, constant releases of features and capabilities that you'll see in the wallet. Um, as a side note, we've established um, a relatively solid continuous deployment methodology with our, our engineering teams now. So uh, we are releasing more often. Not sure if anybody noticed that or, you know, releasing small early and often um, now as opposed to big chunks, which is you know, better from a million different directions, including, you know, products relationship with marketing and how we're able to like make, create a go to market for a particular feature or capability that's related to an initiative. Um, so I would personally like to um, make subcomponent updates to these high level initiatives on a bi yearly basis. So every six months or so we'll have updates. Um, but I also want to reserve the right to make pivots happen, right? Because, you know, if we transition, when we transition from a bear to a bull market um, back in the crypto industry, we're going to be looking at, you know, what opportunities we have, right? And we might, you know, find an opportunity that, that you know, brings, you know, VSAS down a notch and maybe there's something else that's new in there. So we might pr reprioritize. And if you balance it, if you, if you balance and reprioritize more than every six months, it tends to be muddled and you don't tend to keep focus. And that's really where we're at right now. We need to focus. We need to make sure that we're, you know, focusing on outcomes as opposed to uh, features and we'll get there. So I would say from an initiative level, you know, no more than every six months, um, from a feature level, you'll see releases rolling, um, you know, ideally every month or so is the cadence that we'd like to see. And you'll see um, bits and pieces of releases, like small updates, small fixes, um, you know, improvements, enhancements, optimizations, uh, like even biweekly. So. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds, that sounds very exciting. David, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I do. Thank you. Um, yeah, Chris, I, I appreciate you being on in this. I, I think, think I speak for everybody when I say that, um, you know, probably the biggest, most urgent thing we need is volume. We need, we need volume in Divi, right? It kind of helps all of these efforts. What, um, which of these initiatives do you think is going to bring us some volume? And when do you see that increasing? Because hopefully it'll be before the next bull market actually takes off. I think that's a great segue into uh, getting Josh uh, up here. <laughs> Josh, do you want to take that one? Hey, guys, sorry about that. 
Twitter has taken me out and I had to reset my password to get back in here. Um, so regarding volume, I think addressing our volume starts with addressing liquidity. And I think a lot of the reason that we don't have necessarily the most attractive market right now for traders is that it's a little bit illiquid. And I think that's that's more a symptom of the fact that we're almost exclusively listed on a, on a centralized exchange. Whereas on a decentralized exchange, you tend to get substantially deeper liquidity because the community altogether is providing it, right? Rather than just the project. So I think as far as our strategy within the roadmap to address, you know, trade volume, um, that really starts with the DeFi protocol and creating a place where folks are incentivized to provide liquidity. Um, and I, I actually just did a presentation with our, with our community about this, um, I think last week, talking about how we're creating incentives for folks to cross the bridge to go onto the Ethereum side, provide liquidity for E to the and then what that does is two things. One, it allows the entirety of Divi's community to provide liquidity, which creates a much more attractive market for traders. And then the second thing that that does is it creates price discrepancies um, where you may have a different price on KuCoin than you do on Uniswap, for instance. And that's great because that creates arbitrage opportunities. And now people are you know, trying to capitalize on those inefficiencies by let's say, for instance, buying on Uniswap where maybe there's a discount on the price and then selling it on KuCoin where there's a premium on the price or vice versa. Um, and that arbitrage, you know, creates tons of volume. Um, arbitrage is really common. It's probably one of the most attractive things in trading um, aside from, you know, like just regular swing trades. So it, it really, as far as the roadmap is concerned, I think that really pivots around the, the DeFi protocol. Um, I'm going to take a, a page out of Chris's book and I'm not really talking about the exact dates of when that's finished. I have, um, I have spoken a little bit about what that's going to take. Um, I think we're at the point now where we have all the front end designs finished. Um, we have certain smart contracts that are pretty integral to that protocol that are finished. And I can start sharing that with the community now um, because they're in a really great place or great place. They, they look really good. Um, and those contracts are audited, by the way. So that's another really exciting feature. So we'll start sharing some of that stuff here shortly, giving you guys access to the UIs um, so we can get some feedback from the community as well. But uh, I can't speak exactly on timelines. Production timeline, um, it, it's going to be about a quarter from the point that we started. Uh, but there's certain things that have to fall into place before we do that. So hopefully that answers your question on trade volume. That does. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. All right. We got some other people on the stage here. Crypto Frisco, Papa Joe, ADS. Any questions, guys? Just, hey, dude, uh, just give me a second. I'm in a loud place. I'm going to step outside. Someone else can go. Just, um, just out of, out of curiosity, how many folks here have used any Web3 protocols? Let's see. Okay, cool. Yeah, you guys can just use the emotes to respond. Can you define that? When you say Web3 protocol, what are you talking about specifically? So I'm speaking about a Web3 application like Compound, like Aave, where you're basically connecting your browser or your browser wallet to uh, to the protocol. So like Uniswap, SushiSwap, Compound, Aave. Um, oh, yeah. Any of those. Does yeah. EOS, like I, I used, um, I, I, oh gosh, what did I buy? I bought checks on the EOS blockchain using... Mm -hmm. It was some crazy convoluted process, but I think that counts. Yeah. Are there, for those of you, I mean, feel free to speak up or raise your hand. Um, for those of you that have used Web3 protocols, what do you all feel is the greatest pain point with using them from a usability standpoint? Is it having to add a new token? Is it having to add a network? Um, the reason I ask is because we want to really take those things in, in mind when we create the DBD5 protocol. 
I always hate connecting my wallet to anything because I'm not technical and so I can't read through the code and know if, you know, there's malicious code in there and I'm going to get scammed or not. So, you know, end up making DGEN wallets to connect to things and all that. So if there was some security measures in place that could clearly show you what you're signing when you're signing a transaction, I think mm -hmm. that's one of the really good things um, for usability. Got it. Yeah, I think part yeah, of that boils down to oh, documentation. Sorry. No, go ahead. You first. Oh, so um, I was just going to say uh, along the same lines um, that I, like, because of all the, I mean, because we hear about the, uh, constantly about, you know, someone losing their NFTs or getting their wallet drained or uh, something like that. And so I've only been, like, for example, and this is kind of, it's, I don't know if this applies kind of in the same way, but I basically only connect my wallet to, like, I'll, I'll only, like, physically connect my wallet um when using the browser like metamask um i'll only do it if i'm connecting to like um uh uh, uh sea or um uh the ether scan or um something like um uh, maybe uh uh what was it uh so rare or uh mm -hmm. looks looks rare that that one um and for example, like if a project, um, like an NFT project were to release like, uh, an NFT collection, like I would, sometimes I would only do it through Etherscan, um, if possible, like if I was minting or something, like if I was interacting with like a smart contract, I, I tend to shy away from like just connecting it to, um, the project's website, um, uh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So mostly you know, from what it sounds like is you try to stay on kind of like the verified sources, right? Things that are, you know, pretty high profile, like OpenSea and so rare. I think for a lot of folks that are non-technical, um, it, it's almost like traditional consumer products, right? Like, you know, how, how do I, as a person who isn't necessarily a mechanic, buy a car that's reliable, right? You look towards an authority on the subject, which would be someone like, you know, um, like Consumer Reports, right? I think for the space to get a little bit more adoption in DeFi, there needs to be better sources that are vetting these things um, for the folks that are not necessarily technical, right? And there's there's a little bit of work being done through websites like RugDoc that does evaluate things and does kind of expose different risk factors on DeFi protocols. But there are other easy ways to understand what you're engaging with. I think part of that is knowing the contract address that you're signing with, right? Um, and, and I really think that the burden for us is partially on Divi to provide some of those educational resources so that you all know that if you're engaging with our protocol, it is in fact our protocol, right? Because I have seen a lot of copycat, you know, protocols made out there. Um, I recently worked on another project where we launched a Web3 protocol and it wasn't even a month before a copycat one was already out, right? And they were basically an identical version of the site with a slightly different domain and a wallet connect top right. Um, which, you know, it was malicious, but I think the important thing for folks that are not necessarily technical is at least understanding that if they can't read the code, they know that they're going to the correct contract address and they're receiving that from an official, you know, source, whether it be from the actual project, from the Divi Twitter, um, that they can actually see, okay, I'm signing. This is the contract address that I just signed with, right? I know I can at least... I can at least trust that I'm going to the correct place, right? And uh, I think that's one of the things that we're really prioritizing when we release the DeFi protocol is educational resources that sort of empower folks in our community to know that they're engaging with what they're wanting to engage with and that they're not, you know, signing a contract with a copycat. And then another thing is really helping people with operational security, right? That's another thing that I really want to push as we release the protocol is, maybe don't sign contracts with the wallet that holds all your funds. That might be a good idea, right? And I think uh, 
I heard, <laughs> I heard creating kind of like degen wallets. That's a great way to put it in a little bit of a more crude way, but maybe creating wallets that you're using specifically for something that's a little bit of a higher risk profile for those people that are getting started in DeFi. That's a great approach. Um, and we will be releasing content that's, you know, kind of consistent with those subjects as we release those things. Hey, Papa Joe, I think you've, you've had your hand up for uh, a little bit. So um, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me guys. Um, I was going to say just real quick question around uh, a little more detail on the SaaS platform and what all that entails, you know, is that a uh, crypto project specific? Can that be where a retailer approaches you that wants to integrate some sort of uh, uh, crypto related payment processing into maybe their point of sales? Um, is this something where it's uh, y'all build a net new something from the ground up? What, what, what is that a little more detail around um, the soft, the, uh, the SAS, uh, the wallet as a, as a service basically? I think Chris could probably speak on that the best. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. I was muted. Um, so in summary, uh, essentially the the six core capabilities of the wallet, buy, received, um, buy, or sorry, send, receive, buy, sell, uh, convert, and earn uh, as a service that's integratable into ecosystem X. Um, so we have uh, some partnerships and some customers that are exploring uh, the opportunity of a basic white label. So literally utilizing our wallet um, with a, a new skin. Um, so that's the kind of lowest level, all the way up to um, full and complete integration of all of the wallet's capabilities, um, including fiat rails and swapping, converting, um, and also uh, additional um, to coins and tokens, right? So new coins and tokens and or uh, coins and tokens that are of... Um, uh, a non kind of blockchain based service. So not to divulge too much information, but uh, it's, it's a really broad um, offering. And what we really want to do is offer it uh, via a very robust and secure API uh, so that basically anyone can, um, you know, sign a contract with us, um, pay some licensing fees, work with us on, you know, two new projects and initiatives, new capabilities and the future sets of the wallet. Um, so, all the way from a basic skinning all the way through to even, you know, core capabilities plus plus. Does that answer your question? Yes, effectively that does. Um, so just to throw a, a, an example out there, let's say one of the nation's largest retailers approaches you guys um, and they want to integrate with your, with the wallet. Uh, to basically house the crypto that they're going to accept from their customers nationwide or globally. What would that look like in that scenario? Is that something you guys would do or you guys, is that not, like this, is that not the right avenue for that? Uh, I think at this point in time, we're open to absolutely any conversation and it's more of a brainstorm as to whether or not we could support it in the near term or the longer term. Um, we're talking, like I said, across the board from you know, full capabilities plus to, you know, just basic white labels. So uh, if you do have something, absolutely DM me and let's, let's, let's chat. I can for sure do that. Thanks for the yeah. answer. And thanks for the response and uh, time guys. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, Josh, you know, I'm really curious about NFT 2.0. And so I, I would, I'd love to hear anything that you can share about that um, that maybe we haven't heard yet or maybe just a summary of, of what we have heard already. Um, and I was also curious if you're familiar with um, NFTX and if the NFT 2.0 is going to be similar at all to it, um, the NFTX vaults are offering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've actually looked into NFTX, but I'm still kind of like understanding what their full functionality is. Uh, it seems kind of like a, essentially looks like a marketplace to me with some ways of getting liquidity. NFT 2.0 as a concept is a little bit different than that. Um, partially because rather than extracting liquidity from an existing NFT, what we're doing is we're actually collateralizing and applying a new value proposition to an existing NFT. So um, 
without making too many assumptions about what folks here know and what their understanding of, of DeFi is and NFTs, I'll I'll talk through the concept a little bit from from the top and help you guys understand how it works. So NFT 2.0, um, the reason that we really started moving in, in the NFT DeFi direction is because I think there's uh, I think there's two segments of the DeFi market right that haven't really been effectively connected yet one of those is the DeFi traders you know the folks that are always looking for market inefficiencies they're looking for really uh unique ways of you know extracting liquidity and then there's folks that really like nfts and that enjoy trading them for their artistic and their collectible um value i personally probably fall more in the first camp which is the people that look for trading opportunities that look for inefficiencies in the market I frankly don't care that much about NFTs. The only times I really buy them are when my friends launch them because I want to support their project. Um, so those two segments of the market, I think, are pretty split up right now. And the point of bringing those things together was to add a whole new value proposition to NFTs by essentially collateralizing every NFT with a yield-bearing asset, Right. And, and part of that inspiration came from the different treasury DAOs that we've seen in the past, like Olympus. Um, Olympus certainly pioneered the model, but we wanted to apply some actual real utility to it, right? And so for those that don't understand Olympus, Olympus DAO, um, essentially what they did is they allowed you to buy an asset, right, own, and then bond it to the treasury for a rebasing currency, right? And basically a derivative that would increase in the amount that was uh, in your wallet as the treasury value increased. And that's great, right? That's awesome. It's a really cool concept. And the, the game theory behind it was really intricate and really interesting. But the challenge with that is it's, it's just kind of money for the sake of money. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it sort of boils down to a game of musical chairs, right? It's like, who bought the tokens first, got into the treasury, and has the rebasing before everyone else? And who kind of exits with their profits first. Um, those models, you know, you can over-engineer them to last a little bit longer to have, you know, greater sustainability. But at the end of the day, you know, people are people and people are going to collect profits. Um, so inevitably, that house of cards does tumble. And that's what we saw with Olympus. It's what we saw with Wonderland Time. Um, so NFT 2.0 does take some inspiration from the Treasury DAO and the yield-bearing asset but it applies the interesting utility of NFTs to it. So in the NFT 2.0 concept, essentially the way that it works is folks that have Divi can take their Divi, bridge across to the Ethereum side to get ERC-20 Divi. And if they provide liquidity, right, for the Divi ETH pair, they receive the LP tokens that Uniswap essentially provides them as a marker of their liquidity position, right? They can take those LP tokens and then stake them on the DeFi protocol, the Divi DeFi protocol, and receive rewards from our layer one staking, right? Those rewards, um, two things are happening. One, they're earning, you know, rewards through that farm because they're staking their LP tokens. And so that in itself is kind of yield bearing. Um, but they're also earning yield from the LP rewards, from the trading that's taking place, from the liquidity that they provided. So they're earning in two different ways now. And, and this is just inherent to the protocol, right? Well, we wanted to kind of innovate a little bit further than that and say, well, what if we were to take, you know, their position in the farm and mint a token that is a, is a derivative of that position, right? Because that position is yield bearing in two different ways. You're earning rewards in layer one stakes, right, that are coming from the bridge. And you're also earning rewards from the LP rewards. So if we were to create a, a derivative token, we can use that to collateralize NFTs that are minted. And that's really interesting. And, and I'll give an example here. Um, some of you have probably heard me give this example like countless times. You're probably tired of hearing it, but it's probably the easiest way to explain NFT 2.0. So let's say, for instance, that you were to collateralize an NFT with a yield-bearing asset, right? Well, if the listing price of that asset is such that it's, you know, twice as much as the, the, 
the NFT collateral. Well, somebody who appreciates the NFT just for its collectible value, they might pay that price happily, right? Someone like me, I probably don't really care about the collectible value because I don't really care about the artistic value of NFTs. But let's say, for instance, that yield-bearing asset that's collateralizing that NFT grows. It appreciates due to the yield-bearing nature of it. And eventually, that collateral is worth more than the listing price. Well, for someone like me who likes to really capitalize on market inefficiencies, I might take that NFT, buy it at its listing price, and then take it and redeem the collateral behind it, right? And then collect profits. So, you know, I'll give you guys a real world example. Let's say for instance that, you know, Disney, they were to take Baby Yoda and they were to mint 10 Baby Yoda NFTs, right? And each Baby Yoda is listed at $15, but they've collateralized that with $10 worth of the derivative divvy right we can call it x divvy for example's sake so let's say on day zero right we have an nft with ten dollars worth of x divvy and a fifteen dollar listing price to purchase that nft well let's say after you know let's say after a week the collateral value of the x divvy is now twenty dollars right well for me who likes to capitalize on market inefficiencies because i'm a trader um, or a hobbyist trader, I'm not a professional. Um, I would I would identify that opportunity and say, okay, well, there's a five dollar profit margin there. If I buy this and take the collateral out, and I'm only paying fifteen bucks for the listing price, someone like me would buy the entire collection. I would buy all ten of them, frankly, right? And I would extract the collateral and take profits from there, right? And so what that effectively has done is it's created an entirely new paradigm of NFTs where they're not just worth their collectible value. They're not just worth their artistic value. They are now also worth a financial value, right? And I think the incentives are two ways, right? The incentives for me as a trader are that I can find NFTs out there with collateral that's worth more than the listing of that NFT. And the interesting piece for creators is that man that guy just bought all my baby yodas right and things are not going to sit on the shelf for too long right because eventually the collateral value of that nft is going to be greater than the listing price and now suddenly it's very attractive financially to buy that nft that's a whole new paradigm because divi at least in, in the way that we're creating rewards they're coming from real value. We're not just minting things, you know, for giggles. We're actually generating value from the LP rewards, which is trading fees, right? So that's actual value creation. And then the other former rewards are coming from the layer one stakes that are being generated at the bridge. And, and that is securing the network, by the way, that that staking is actually validating blocks. Um, so we're validating transactions by confirming blocks. But the point is, we're not just printing value. These rewards are very real. And eventually when people mint NFTs through our marketplace, right? In the NFT 2.0 marketplace, their NFTs will have two forms of value, not just one. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's a really interesting, um, a really interesting way to, kind of reimagine the value of nfts um i guess the first thing that pops into my head is why would a seller leave an item listed um for less than the collateral value is worth like i think if i had that listing up i would probably adjust the the price of the listing as the collateral grew um and then I guess my other question is where does the NFT kind of fit into that scenario? Because it almost seems like really it's more about just taking uh, collateral positions. So I wanted to throw out there, um, talking about collateral, I'm not big in the NFT space just because I don't feel like there's enough of a value add to it personally. But whenever I look at projects like Proppy, and I look at how they're literally 
you're buying a house via NFT. So if that was the collateral that would change things on this, would you be able to take, say, um, liquidity out of your house if you wanted to sell or mint more NFTs and stuff like that? But then your house becomes partially owned, owned by other people. But, you know, I don't know. That'd be an interesting, uh, just an interesting idea, interesting thought. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, RNBW, I'm not sure how to say your name. So <laughs> if you don't mind, can you repeat your question about what you said uh, regarding the NFTs? Yeah. So, I mean, f first off, just like if I had one of those baby Yodas and I noticed sure. the collateral was building up um, mm -hmm. and got above the listing price, I would probably just modify the listing price and, and raise that price. Um, mm -hmm. And then... I'm kind of. I think I'm kind of getting lost as to where the the NFT actually fits into the value of of the whole piece because it it kind of seems like it's more just the value of the collateral, mm. that, that, and like the NFT is sort of superficial. So that's a that's a good question. That's one piece I didn't really expand on. So when people are placing collateral into these NFTs, right? Even just for the time that they're sitting on the marketplace, that is liquidity locked for Divi in the decks that's great for us right as a project as an ecosystem as a community as a market it's awesome because that means that uh e divi eth liquidity was locked in order to create that nft right so that's a huge benefit for us um but you also have to understand that in order to create that derivative folks would have had to buy e divi first which is essentially just erc20 divi right so now you've created utility for divi You've created a form of locking up liquidity and you've created um, a derivative of two forms of rewards. In terms of uh, folks shifting the price, yeah, creators creators could. They absolutely could shift the price, right? That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, ultimately, it's up to them. But the point is now your NFT has two sorts of value. Sure, you could, you know, you could... Um, unravel your nft and just take the collateral that's fine but then you're not really selling the art and you're losing the value of having this very attractive way of selling your pieces so let's say if you are an nft creator and you put i don't know five dollars right behind it you got to understand too that nft uh gas fees at least on ethereum they're pretty gnarly they're, they're pretty expensive right they've gone down substantially since you know the, the bear but it, a couple bucks in there is not a big deal. Over time, you know, you can literally set it and forget it. And you know that your NFTs are literally becoming more attractive day by day by day, right? Um, and in some form, we have those NFTs are now store value, they're artistic. And really, it's just, it's marrying these two value props together, right? In a way that makes your NFTs as a creator, it, it makes it a, uh, attractive to a whole new audience. Because frankly, I might have an NFT as a profile picture here, but I don't like them all that much. It's, you know, that was a, a friend's project. Um, I love capitalizing on inefficiencies. So having NFTs out there that I can take, unravel and collect profits from, that's super attractive to me. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it's, at the, it's at the will of the creator. If they want to unravel it, it basically you're burning the NFT to do that. Um, <clears throat> does that answer your question? I think it does. And I think um, I, I'm understanding a piece that was missing in my brain. And so when we're talking about these NFTs, these are NFTs that are specifically created through eDivi to, to be used in the system. It's not like I'm taking a crypto punk from my wallet and then infusing it with some assets. Yeah, so actually we, we're actually scoping out um, how to do that right now and, and really it's um, it's about creating a bridge for nfts right where they take their nft they bring it to divi's nft 2.0 marketplace and they basically lock it up we create the new nft 2.0 version of that i don't know uh, board ape right or, or whatever um, and now you have something that actually has that nft value and it has the the, uh, the collateral value behind it as well yeah Josh, are you, are you familiar with uh, the Engine platform or Engine Engine Coin and Engine cryptocurrency? 
It's E N J I N. I you know what I've heard of it plenty of times, but I'm not all that familiar with their concept and their functionality. But yeah, so they they I think actually coincidentally ICO'd the same month as Divi, so it was in 2017. Mm-hmm. And that from from their whole concept, it, it was all about um, infusing and um, the NFTs on their platform with their their own token, the Engine Coin. Um, and it almost feels like over the years they started to distance themselves from that vision, and I'm not really sure why. But it may be a, a good case study to kind of look out, look over, and see what worked for them, what didn't work for them. Um, and yeah, just as another another project in the space that's thought about the sort of NFT infusion model. Yeah, that's a that's a good case study to look at. Um, we'll definitely take some time to look at it. I can think of one reason right out the gate why you wouldn't want to do that. Why you wouldn't just want to lock up your token in the NFT. Um, and that's actually something that we're dealing with right now. And it's uh, a liquidity scarcity, right? As most of you guys know that you know, Divi is predominantly locked up in staking and nodes, right? And one of the kind of side effects of that is that we have a somewhat illiquid market because there's a massive supply constriction and there isn't necessarily the same incentives for somebody to take that Divi, um, unravel their master node or their staking vault, go out and trade it as there is to just park it into a node and let it earn, right? So because of that, there's not a lot of trade volume, but there's not a lot of liquidity. And so it kind of creates a liquidity crisis, um, which we're sort of feeling the effects on because a lot of art Divi is locked up. Now, if you're locking up Divi through the NFT 2.0 concept, that Divi is locked up in liquidity. Totally different, right? So it's it's... It's doing a couple things. First off, the Divi, the layer one Divi, is sitting at the bridge, right? Um, and in most cases, it'll be staking. So it's creating layer one stakes and helping to secure the network, right? Two, the E Divi, right, that's minted as a result of, of what you cross the bridge with, could now be sitting in the liquidity pool on Uniswap. So it's also creating liquidity. And then on top of that, the derivative which is backing the NFT um, is creating a, a yield bearing derivative, right? To collateralize NFTs and add a whole new value to them. So I can give you one reason why it's not wise to necessarily lock it up in NFTs. And, and part of that is that you're removing liquidity from the ecosystem. But the way that we're doing it through a derivative allows the liquidity to remain locked while folks are, you know, using whatever they want to do with their, with their derivative. So, that's that's one major differentiator, is that we're actually keeping liquidity, we're keeping it deep, and we're not just ripping, you know, we're not just causing a scarcity, unlike you know, engine coin might be. So, are there any like legal or regulatory complications that come along with infusing a cryptocurrency into an NFT? Um, really, the the litmus test for this is can we stop it, right? If the smart contracts are immutable and it is being done through the DAO treasury that the NFT 2.0 concept will have, ultimately it's the user doing something on their own and without our involvement, right? Um, so that's that's one really strong piece to it that kind of protects us from the regulatory scrutiny is we're simply creating Lego blocks and it's up to folks to put those blocks together, right? In a way that may or may not create a derivative. Um, but there's already so much precedent in the space for, for these kinds of derivatives, especially from Olympus, right? Olympus is a pure DAO and it's really difficult for anything to stop it because it's really driven by the community. But I've, end of the day, I'm not a, I'm not a securities attorney, so I I can't speak on it with the full breadth and depth of, of the law, right? But whatever we're doing, we always try to do it in the spirit of regulation And a part of that is doing it through kind of a DAO based contract so that we're not the ones responsible for playing God in that scenario. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Chris and Josh, thank you guys so much for spending some time with us and answering all these questions. If there's anybody in the room that has more questions, please come on up on stage. We want to hear from you. 
Um, we want also want to be respectful of everybody's time. We've been here for almost an hour, so if you guys have to go, just let us know. Um, but if you want to stay and keep answering questions, we'd love to hear more, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so anybody here on stage that hasn't spoken yet that would like to, to ask uh, any questions? I think monetary policy up here, or monetary revolution, excuse me. Um, you came up on stage, and I don't know if you had anything to mention um, before. I know I know Chris has to, to head out, so um, I would encourage you to, if your question, well, ask your question uh, before Chris. I think he's getting ready to head out. but Or also, Chris, if you have any final thoughts that you want to leave us with, that would be awesome before you go. Yeah, I could do that. And that's if the, the question doesn't come up. And I do have a hard stop, unfortunately. Sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, so like the question that was asked about uh, Vertical SaaS and whether or not that project was an option within our current thinking, like, absolutely reach out to me. Um, all the social channels are open. Um, you can DM me on Twitter or whatever you want to do. Uh, the, the concept of an initiative is something that we want to maintain because initiative doesn't drive us into a particular set of um, features and capabilities. It drives us into the market. So we're moving forward in a really constructive way, and we've got the team behind it to really get it to go. And so I'm feeling really optimistic about 2023 and beyond, and I hope everybody else is too. And thanks a ton for your questions, and it's been great hanging out. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Chris. Make sure to visit us often. It's always great to hear from from the team. See you later. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Doing great. So uh, it's pretty cool, actually. It's been a while since I've seen uh, we've been in a space with Divi. Uh, Josh knows who I am, actually. But um, good to see you, Jeff. Actually worked with Jeff. Worked with Jeff back in the day. Worked at the Blockchain Center. Um, Josh, good to see you, brother. Hope you're doing well. Hey, man. But, uh, yeah, big fan of Divi, what you guys are doing. Um, I think it's it's about time that, that projects have what you guys have, and you guys have been around for a while too, which is nice to to see a project that actually, you know, does what they say they're going to do. And, uh, you know, can't speak highly more highly of Josh and what he's doing as the, you know, innovations officer over there. So, uh, nothing but respect for you guys and Jeff has always always had great conversations with Jeff and the team and and uh, yeah just big fan of what you guys are doing and continue to keep crushing I appreciate that much love Isaac hope you're doing well man you know trying to crush as best I can I'm going to be if any of you are going to be in uh, in Vegas in October at Web3 Expo I'm going to be speaking on a panel out there with um, VP of Amazon and CEO of MasterCard. This should be an interesting conversation around Dow governance and um, non-dilutive elastic supply rebasing and, you know, collateralized asset protocols and all that fun stuff that Josh was talking about um, with illiquidity in markets and how do you how do you deal with the, the, the token economics of that. So, yeah, if you guys are out there, Jeff, if you're out there, I know you're uh, you're not in the U.S., but if anybody from your team is out there, I'd love to connect and network with you guys while you guys are out there. Awesome. I hope to see you there, Isaac. Man, thanks for the love. And it sounds like you're just traveling around, dropping knowledge. For Thanks for that as well, my man. And yeah, Jeff, the voice, if any of you guys want to hop up on stage and, uh, you know, catch us up with what's going on with you, it's always great to hear from you guys as well. Frisco, what's up with you, my man? And we did have Nico jump up on stage. Um, Nico, did you have a question for, for Josh, perhaps? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for having the spaces. I read the roadmap, and I understand what you can and can say in a roadmap. Uh, but um, I know we still have some things that are still being signed and in the final stages. But I just wanted, if there was not to give any spoilers, but what would be some of the possibilities of a use case for the loyalty 2.0? Like the pie in the sky stuff, but then some like what, what's the grounded? Cause I know a lot of people had questions on um, specifics for a roadmap and like just wanted some possibilities. What, what could happen with that? You know, 
unfortunately, I think this is more within Chris's wheelhouse because loyalty 2.0 is, is more so within our product realm. Um, NFT 2.0 and loyalty 2.0 kind of borrow from each other in certain ways. So loyalty 2.0 is more about generating um, loyalty rewards from folks that are holding Divi, right? And so we've had discussions with different uh, rewards programs. I, one of them I would love to say, but I, I don't know if we're under NDA with them. Um, and we've talked about, you know, potentially taking their, their debit card and, and adding the Divi rewards piece to it through the loyalty 2.0. Um, one of them, um, one of them is an airline. I'll put it that way. I'm not sure if we're allowed to say their name because we're still having a discussion and we're still actually bidding on that project right now. Um, they're really interested. Don't say it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, it's a major airline and they're looking at basically unrolling their blockchain strategy and adding some form of crypto reward to their current um, ecosystem, specifically with their cards, like the same way that you have miles and you have points. They want to be doing that with crypto. Um, We're currently bidding on it to be the reward system for them. Um, Like I said, I can't, I'm not, Chris would know better because he's the one taking point on that. Um, so I can't really say the name of it, but th- that would be an example per se, right? As opposed to airline miles, you're, you're earning rewards with Divi. Hopefully that gives you a good example. Yeah, that's the, exactly what I was hoping yeah. to hear. Yeah, I don't um, get in my, chopped off for being too specific on what we're not supposed to say. My, but, yeah, yeah, in my field, I work for a large media buying agency mm-hmm. in New York. Cool. And one of my clients is a energy drink that's all i can say um and they've got some cool ideas with blockchain that just releasing in their products and part of the roadmap they have out there and the same specifics of they have a lot that they want to release but they don't want to get front run on Mm -hmm. and they have some deals that are going through also um but that's exactly the kind of answer i was looking to hear for the loyalty programs that are um Mm -hmm. coming out and that sounds really awesome and exciting also, this would be, and then this is everything we're talking about is obviously, or hopefully, in a, is planned or expect expected to be integrated in the wallet. Correct? Yeah. Well, I should clarify on that. So typically, when when we're doing like the Web three things, that tends to be more on the emerging solutions front, which is more within my department. Um, the point of having it in a separate department as opposed to within product, which is Chris's wheelhouse, is that we can do a little bit of experimentation and skunk works. And then when something is of really high value and is getting a lot of traction, then we can actually productize that within the wallet, right? Um, it sort of creates a little bit of like a vacuum for me to build things that we can experiment with. And then um, once the contracts are ready, the you know, the whole Web3 infrastructure is ready, we can actually productize it, right? So the goal ultimately is that, you know, you'll be able to do some of these DeFi protocol functions of, you know, farming your LP tokens, um, but you'll be able to do it in the wallet because ultimately they're just smart contracts. You can call them, you know, within the wallet. Um, So yeah, ultimately everything gets built to one day be in the wallet, but it doesn't necessarily start that way to be more specific. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Anything else, guys, before I hop off? Josh, I just wanted to say thanks, man. This was awesome. And uh, big thanks to Chris. So we could get some applause out there from the crowd. Uh, I think this was such a great um, space. Is a good first hour if we can keep it rolling. But thank you for your time, Josh. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely. And uh, everybody else for their questions. Um, Josh, I'm a ping you. I'm, I'm still curious on some Web 3.0. And also, you know, maybe you could leave us with uh, maybe applications or uh, other, other companies, other partners, other people that have inspired you and in what they're doing with Web 3.0. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe we'll save that for the next one. Let's save that for the next one. Let's do it. All right, All right, well, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate the questions and for listening. Take care, everyone. Have a lovely thank- weekend, too. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh. Thanks. All right. Well, Jeff, 
voice, everybody. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. I see there's a lot of uh, familiar faces in the crowd, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, getting to listen to Chris and Josh. And uh, we are happy to keep the conversation going if anybody has anything that they wanted to mention or maybe questions that, uh, you know, the, the speakers up here might be able to handle. Um, welcome you to raise your hand. Um, if, if not, I did want to bring everybody back to Divi Day. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but submit forms, share media. We, we want to hear from you. We want to make uh, September 27th as uh, fun and, and engaging of an experience as we can. Uh, I think, well, I won't speculate on the but I think we will do a spaces on uh, on that Tuesday, which will be a little different. Uh, but uh, Papa Joe, yes, uh, you've got your hand up. What's up? I just wanted to say, guys, I really appreciate what you're doing. I don't think a lot of – I mean, everyone always says that, but when people realize what Divi is doing, how they're making crypto easy for everyone, how the partnerships that they're building, they're, you guys are really laying a foundation – that I've rarely seen any other projects do. I've been in this space, some of you know, for a very long time, almost the beginning, and I, I've kind of watched it grow up, and then just watching you guys come out here and build a foundation like you're doing, when this starts really growing, you guys aren't going to falter, you're not going you're to you're gonna have that foundation to stand on, and I really just want to say I'm impressed, I really appreciate what you guys are doing, and uh, looking forward to what's coming. Uh, thank you so much, Papa Joe. Those are powerful words. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's in this room and everybody that contributes um, in spaces or in uh, Discord or anywhere in the Twitterverse or <laughs> anywhere in the world. You know, I just I love all the, the Divi community members and the unique contributions that we all have. And um, I really have enjoyed having these conversations and uh, thank you, Ryan. And thank you, Canon, for showing up consistently every week. Um, it's just, I think that it's, it's a really great place to build community and build a solid foundation. And I love that, that we're doing this with consistency and I hope that we keep doing this for a long time and we just grow into a very powerful entity. Yes, what he said. Uh, well, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, it is a it's a wonderful opportunity that you know we've been able to to kind of put forth here on Fridays and get get information out to the community and get opportunities for the community to engage with with us. So thank you, uh, everybody who is here, um, everybody who's listening after the fact. Um, and, and that's also a, a big thing we've noticed that, you know, the, the spaces we've, uh, I think, uh, about 150-ish people uh, in, in real time. But uh, the replays are, it's huge. I mean, there lots of people are listening to these after, like as a, as a recording. And because of that, that's something that we've we've noticed, and we're we're going to be getting the uh, the spaces onto YouTube, and we also are going to be uh, trying to dice up the the clips into some digestible pieces to share out on Twitter and and some other platforms. But uh, yeah, all of that is coming to you guys, so stay tuned. Um, Hopefully we will be able to get this episode that, that you're a part of up on uh, YouTube. I, I can't say when it'll be up, but I think we, we've got things in place to be recording and then processing. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but Heather, I saw you come up on stage. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I do. I look forward to these every, every Friday. And, you know, I, I think it's great that we, you know, hear from, a lot of the the leadership at, at Divi, um, it's you know it's one thing to speculate on what we read and what's posted, but it's another thing to hear it you know out of someone's mouth. So you guys are doing a great job, um, you know, getting everybody to kind of join in the last like couple weeks. Um, and I and I'm so happy to start hearing about NFT conversations too. You know, everybody's got their theory on it. You know, whether it's useful useless 
not of value, of value. Um, but I want to encourage everybody to go check out what's happening at Lightning Works because basically, Basically, it's awesome. Well, I did. Second, someone, but, uh... I did. Someone was calling in, but it's it's basically taking you know artwork and comics, which everyone's used to just the paper format, and everybody, if they were a collector in the industry, what would they do? They would not take you know they wouldn't take their comic out of the the packaging. They wouldn't use it. Sorry, somebody keeps checking in. But the whole of having something collectible in the past was always like, don't touch it. Don't take it out of the packaging. Don't use it. And now it's it's shifting. It's shifting gears. Um, so it's all it's creating the comic as an NFT, but the value is there. But you can use it and you can read it and you can enjoy it. Um and it's going to be interesting to see how we're, we're creating a use case where you can buy these NFTs with Divi or other purchase methods. And now on the roadmap, there's going to be a way where we're going to be able to extract value from these two. So I don't have it all kind of straight in my head. I'm just kind of diving into the roadmap and digesting everything that Joshua said because he did say a lot of important information um that sometimes is just a little bit over me as far as like derivatives and yield based um types of conversations but i'm going to learn more about it but if everyone kind of wants to follow the use case that we're we're working on it with lightning works um we're over in the discord it's um just discord gg slash lightning works and we're we're going to try to release a lot of new information that we're doing right right in there. So it's going to be like a first, you know, you hear it here, hear it in the Discord first. Um, but our launch is coming up on October seventh. Um, so if anyone's kind of interested in finding out more, can join the join the Discord. Yeah, this is Jeff. Um I just wanted to say, you know, thanks, Heather, for mentioning that. And I also wanted to just really invite everybody. I want everybody from our Debbie family over. We're going to be selling only 777 of our Genesis, basically first issue. So we're calling it the Genesis. And it's going to have a lot of utility throughout the entire ecosystem that we're building. So there's only going to ever be 777. That would be super great if a whole bunch of our Divi family each had one because we have such a great community and it would make a really good solid uh, foundation for lightning works. So I'm hoping a lot of Divi fans will come and buy one and be part of that too. Um, as opposed to having it all just be NFT speculators. Um, because I know Div the Divi family is people that think long term and really appreciate what we're doing. And I think it'll make lightning works a lot better in the long run to have you all as OG Genesis holders. So please come over and uh, take a look at what we're doing. Yeah, and I just wanted to add that uh, I, I found a link or a, a tweet from Lightning Works that includes the Discord invite. So if you guys are, are listening in and you're not already in that Discord server, uh, you can click on the, uh, the tweet from Lightning Works and that should be a link to join the Discord. So definitely, you know, we... we obviously want to support Jeff. Um, Jeff has, you know, gave us a, a, a tremendous start and we want to kind of help. We want to scratch each other's backs, essentially. I mean, I think uh, with Lightning Works, they're, they're giving us a lot of exposure and, and we as the Divi community want to support what he's doing. And um, it, it's a very cool idea and, and project. Um, I've been trying to keep up with it, but they're moving quick. And yeah, it's, it's, it's it's very exciting and a lot of fun to to see what's going on over in that Discord channel. So uh, just like Divi is moving over to Discord, they're in Discord. So yeah, and if you, Disc <laughs> yeah, when, when you're supporting Lightning Work, you're supporting Divi too because we have right. Divi integrated throughout 
everything that we're doing. Our prizes are in Divi, and our video game has Divi in it. And just it's Divi, Divi, Divi everywhere. Almost everybody on our team is paid in Divi, too. So everybody there has a huge incentive to want to build up Divi. And we're building all kinds of gamification and sort of uh, crowd building uh, opportunities that reward people in Divi, that use Divi. The idea is to trying to bring in you know thousands or tens of thousands of new small Divi holders and getting them excited about it. So supporting, if you're a Divi holder, which almost everybody in this uh, is, you're, by supporting Lightning Works, you're going to be supporting yourself, right? So it's just uh, it's just another cool way, I think, to support Divi. And I hope everybody that's listening will come and get one one of these and um so the way it basically works you know we have these these genesis ones and then that's we give it a lot of utility like special drops um if we have um, staking we'll have that as part of it um, giving people uh, special places in in our games in the metaverse all this kind of stuff that we're working on it will have a whole bunch of different uh, utility that nothing else will have and it will also have utility that's in conjunction with the um, other comics for example if you have a gen another different issue like siege worlds or throng or whatever it is then we'll give you even more utility so there's a lot of interesting th things you can do and so it's kind of the key to the entire ecosystem and as we get bigger and bigger we expect them to become very sought after because we'll specifically be working on making people want them that's part of what makes the nft space fun right is you have this sort of this set of ogs that have been early the by the first of it and then the founders work in creating different kinds of utility and excitement around that. So we're going to be very focused in a lot of interesting ways. For example, right now we're creating a whole bunch of art by Marvel and DC artists, and we'll be airdropping that to sort of as surprise drops to at various random times to the Genesis holders, um, sort of on a random basis, random amounts, random people, and doing sort of fun things where if you have, depending on what you have and what you've done and what the numbers are that you have, we create, there's a lot of interesting ways to create incentives for people to want to own these and or even want to own more than one. So, for example, we could create a really cool NFT by a famous NFT artist and then anybody that happens to have two on a certain date, you know, on December 2 or whatever it is, you kind of do this kind of thing and create this this uh, sense of like people really want to own these things because they're going to get these free very valuable nfts and and so um and the art will be amazing of course a lot of it will be animated some some of it will be interactive in different ways and a lot of what we're doing technology wise is groundbreaking in the nft space and groundbreaking in the comic book space at the same time so we hope over time we get a lot of uh, attention because the teams are amazing and and what we're doing is just very inter very interesting and looks very high quality compared with most of what's out there in the NFT space. So like many of these things, when you're early, people don't really know what to do with you. But when you're first at doing something, which is kind of like this entire new category, OpenSea doesn't even have a category for comic book NFTs yet. Like that's how early we are. So you've, we've seen these types of projects become extremely uh, sought after when when uh, basically are part of creating a new category. So that's basically what we're trying to do. And we feel that NFTs have a tremendous um, potential in the comic book space because comic books are, are uh, struggling. And like the, in the US, people aren't really buying digital because NF both Marvel and DC have not really known how to do it. And so now both of them are getting into NFTs, um, but they've done it very badly, I think, the way they've done it. and. Um, so it's kind of created a lot of chaos in the in in the space just at the wrong time, right? Where NFTs and, and crypto is in in crypto winter, but it's given us a, an incredible opportunity opportunity to be first to do it right, and to have like with Marvel, all they did was release back issues, right? And and they haven't done new stuff, and so we're doing a lot, all new stories, all new characters, and really focusing on making them iconic and the type of 
characters that stand the test of time. And so anyway, I just, I could talk forever, but I just want to make sure everybody feels very welcome and please come join us. Jeff, and what, I have, I, I, I've been waiting. I have a question. Um, and my question is this. Um, so you guys are, are doing lots of cool things. I'm sold, you know, I want to get one and I'm, I'm trying to, follow along and get the the responsibilities so I can mint one. But what is the actual minting process going to be like? Is it going to be just, you know, Ethereum or is there going to be some kind of EDV tie-in or can, can you elaborate on that at all? Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, the way it's done in the NFT space, you need to join the discord and then you need to get into, get onto the white, onto the white list or the allow list. Right. So I want to make sure all the Divi people are in. Um, so, every, you know, everybody knows Heather in this space. So talk to her. And, and if you're one of the Divi OGs, it's been around for a while and we know you, then I want to make sure all of you get onto the white list and also are, are really able to get one. So because there's going to be what happens is that you have too many. You always have too many people in your white list because not everybody actually goes and buy it so you end up end up with you know two three maybe even four times as many people on this on this list um and i think it's actually almost full so that's another reason why everybody if you aren't in it now everybody needs to come get in and and ping heather to make sure you get added to the white list anybody listening to this that's you know taking the time to join the this is going to be automatically in so heather's listening to this so so um because I, I think it's really important to get more Divi hardcore fans. And if you're listening to this, you're probably a hard, hardcore fan and we want you. So um, so that's the best thing. And then we'll explain it to you what to do. I mean, you'll, the, the process will be that you'll have to have, obviously, a MetaMask and and you'll have to do the, the standard minting process and you can you know see all this in, in OpenSea. We may have the minting process all go through Divi Go, um, but we're trying to we're building so many different new technologies all at once. I'm not sure if that'll end up happening, but we'll make it very clear when we get to that to that point. And Jeff, how how about this? What if they go and join the Discord and and in the general just said, Jeff said I'm in. And yeah. then that, that way Tom will know to put them on the allow list. Um, and then we know we capture everybody and then they're in the discord for details. Are you okay with that? And I'll let Tom know. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Of course, it, you know, it's kind of one of these things where if people, if everybody starts doing it, then a whole bunch of random people might start doing it too. So, <laughs> okay. I will do it. I'll do it individually. So everybody just send me a D DM on Twitter here. Um, uh, just click on me, follow me, and then just send me a D DM and I'll, I'll make sure, um, I'll make sure we get you, get you on the list. No problem. Um, you know, and, and funny, funny enough, like this almost gets along with a jo what Joshua said, like a real life use case of what he was talking about with, you know, the extracting value. Cause he had used Disney and like, if he, Disney does a baby Yoda NFT, he said he'd be all over that. So it's almost, like we're building the, the the use case that Joshua, you know, kind of mentioned earlier. So it's it's kind of exciting. It's like everything's kind of hand hand in hand. Um, and you know, another exciting thing I think applies to everybody. And and Ryan, I'm gonna lump you in with me because um, I know we kind of got involved in Divi around the same time about three years ago. And we were basically stalkers. Like I, I was looking because I was trying to find a project in Costa Rica. And I had reached out to Jeff and said, hey, Jeff, are you hiring? And he said, not yet. You know, we're, we're literally going through crypto winner one. <laughs> but it was the only crypto winner at that time. But he said, join the Divi force or join the Divi crew, whatever it was at that point. And I did. And I was literally a stalker for like two years I knew this was the project I wanted to work on and now I'm working on it and kind of, you know, Ryan did a little bit of the same kind of mechanic. So we're growing, 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 and we're going to need help. So a great way to get involved if you do is to join the discords and get involved and learn about it. And, and hopefully I'm providing, you know, 
some value to what I'm doing with Lightning Works, but it's been an absolute blast. I love all of that that you just said, Heather. I think a lot of us had uh, have had a similar path. Maybe we could find a different word than stalker, though. <laughs> but it's what I was. <laughs> No, I, I will, I will agree that, that I, I stalk Divi. I mean, I met Jeff in, uh, at world CryptoCon back, you know, three years ago or whatever it was. And yeah, just being part of the community and trying to be the, the loudest person on Twitter and, you know, the biggest advocate I could be. And then, you know, one thing led to another, I got a, an opportunity and tried to make the most of it. And yeah, that's what I, I think everybody who's listening i've seen it happen in plenty of other projects that you know people who are passionate and uh active in the community you know as we grow we're going to need help like heather said and and that's you know i think getting people involved and uh, from the community is the biggest you know that's 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 where a lot of talent lies so people like uh, david scott yeah. Yes, I have a selfish question. Jeff, what about those of us that are on the whitelist? Maybe you just like airdrop us a rocket launcher in Siege Worlds because uh, some of us are getting destroyed on a regular basis. And I would I would pay Divi for that rocket launcher. Or maybe is there a black market somewhere where I can just it's buy so fun- one off of somebody? It's so funny you said that because I went when I played Siege Worlds, I immediately sent it. I played it for like 20 minutes. I was like, this is him possible like how is this like anybody can enjoy this and i sent a message to jake saying dude this game is like impossible like nobody there's nobody that's gonna like this and then we you know we have a professional player on it that's works full time for us and he sent me a message like a week later like you know we gotta do something about this game it's just way too easy (laughs) i was like what are you kidding me yeah and apparently he can win the game using like just like any almost any weapon like he can beat kill all of the monsters with almost any weapon and he's figured out a technique to do it so it's i realized like i didn't know i was that bad at these games right but it's just giant you know it's kind of like trying to play football you know against an nfl player and you're in junior high you know it's kind of the 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 spectrum like how badly a team would get crushed right so with the rocket launcher yeah i mean that's the kind of thing we we will be doing right with if you're an OG, right, then we're going to be airdropping really cool stuff to people that you can only get if you have this Genesis, right? And we're going to do, we want to do that over and over and over because we want as many people as possible as we grow into the tens and then the hundreds of thousands and millions of fans of the comic books and lightning works in general. We want people to really, really want these OG, uh, roles that come along with owning a genesis and so we need to create a tremendous amount of excitement around it so yeah that's the kind of that but yeah that's exactly the kind of thing we're doing and also the comic books that comic book itself is going to have depending on the rarity tier you have it will come with nfts so we're having this really cool tech that allows us to put an nft within an nft so um if you have one of the rare rare ones then you're going to get a cool weapon you can't get any other way except by owning it and you're going to be able to sell that and the other thing that's cool about this these genesis is you actually are going to get a what we call a portal pass to start with and that will allow you to redeem basically i wouldn't say redeem it but it's basically the key that gives you the genesis comic book itself so you actually end up with two nfts plus whatever uh, class of weapon you end up getting so it's going to come with a lot of cool stuff and as I was saying, none of this technology has been done by any other NFT uh, company that we've seen, that we know about. It's it's, it's very new for the, for the industry. So we hope people will be t- paying a lot of attention over time. And um, we have a quite a large marketing team. Our marketing team is actually bigger on the Lightning work than it is on, on Divi itself because it's, you know, we're growing. We need to basically reach tens of thousands or we're even hoping 100,000 people. We have what? What do we have now? I think we have thirteen thousand five hundred people in our Twitter, twenty six hundred or so, twenty eight hundred in our in our Discord, and it's growing, you know, very, very well, and will accelerate as we get bigger and bigger uh, opportunities. As you get bigger, what happens is you get noticed by bigger influencers, 
And there's a lot of influencers right now. They're like, okay, yeah, we, we, we like what you're doing, but you know, you need at least 20,000 people in your Twitter, you know, and this kind of stuff. And so once we, as we get bigger, more people take notice, more people come out and, and get excited about it. And when they take a look, like with Divi, when the people actually take the time to take a look, they always really love what they find. And so for us, it's just a matter of getting more eyeballs on what we're doing because it gets people excited. And just one final thing. When people send me a DM, please include your Discord um, username too. That'll help me. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And reach out to Heather, uh, join the Discord, do all the things. They, I, I know they do plenty of uh, engaging tweets with giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff with their characters. And I, I enjoy keeping up with everything that, that's going on there. And of course, thank you for, for joining us and, and having a, telling us a little bit more, Jeff and, and Heather. And... I'm just scrolling my my things, making sure we're not missing anything. Um, but yeah. So the the fir the very first comic book that there's only seven hundred and seventy seven of, that's like actual full comic book, and there won't be any others that are the same story, or there will be the same story, but like different editions. So this one, yeah, we, we call it Siege World Zero. It doesn't really, it doesn't tell like the opening story of the Siege World's universe. It's basically just sort of a snippet of action, an action sequence that could fit in basically, you know, somewhere between issue five, six, seven, eight, somewhere like that. It's sort of random. We wanted to introduce a bunch of the characters and showcase the art and give us a platform to demo a bunch of the technology um, without having to do a full comic. The actual full comic, Siege Worlds 1, is so much better as far as, well, the art's the same, but the story, it has a really good story that we've spent a lot of time crafting before doing it. It's just, I love it. It's just incredible, in my opinion. And um, that's the one that will be coming, you know, a few months later. Um, so, yeah, Siege, and we call that Siege Worlds 1, Siege Worlds 0, mainly is focused on being this sort of key to the entire Lightning Works ecosystem. So, and if you have both, you'll get even more benefits. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Well, let's see. Does, uh, it sounds like we may be wrapping things up. Ryan, how you doing? David? Yeah, I was just, I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking, and that means um... I was actually just trying to drop <laughs> drop Heather, a link to Heather's Twitter profile in uh, the Lightning Works Discord, and I got timed out by the bot for spamming links. So, <laughs> <laughs> Heather, you might want to put your Twitter profile in the Lightning Works Discord. Oh, I will. I will. Also, uh, it would be awesome to have landmines or claymores. So that we can sort of, I know I'm focusing on siege worlds right now, but, um, you know, we want to set up a defensive perimeter up at the little town there and I would love to throw down some landmines. So when the horde comes after me, I can blow them up, especially with the guy with the, the armor and the shield. Wait, 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 wait. We don't need any of that stuff in siege worlds, but we need a siege worlds for Mac. And I, and I need air. Strikes. Amen to I, that. I need to be able to call in airstrikes. Put it on a Mac. Actually, I no need Linux. My, Linux. I need, <laughs> Bullish. I actually need it on my Mac too. So that's one of the things I've been trying to actually find a guy like on Fiverr that we can. We haven't talked to Jake. We're like, let's just find some guy that we can pay a hundred bucks every time we need the Mac version. That's like an expert at that, and he'll just do it. And so every new release, we call up this guy. Here's a hundred bucks. Make us the Mac version because it takes him like, you know, it's like an eighteen hour process or something like that that takes Jake's time. And so. We've got so much to do and so many cool things in the roadmap. Um, the next version is going to be amazing. It's going to have all the our our uh, custom characters from the Siege World comic will be in there. 
And I don't know if everybody saw it. Um, I released a video that shows Divi. We tried to make little Divis that act like the little green glowing things in Minecraft, which I think are so cool. So when you kill a monster, you have all these little mini Divis floating around. And I think each one is like a hundredth of a Divi or something like that. But you get them from every monster. So there's like no way that people aren't going to be seeing Divi over and over and over. And then they kind of magnetically sucked over to you the way they are in Minecraft. It's really cool. So that'll be in the next version. And it'll be true play to earn and that anybody playing is just going to be getting Divi into their Divi Go wallet. So anybody that plays will own a little bit of Divi. I'm just paying for that myself. And, um, and just try to get as many people in as possible. We have an influencer from the Phil from the Philippines who supposedly has like 500,000 people who's taken an interest. So we're trying to get all this ready so we can have him do it. And you know, that's the biggest country in the world for play to earn games because of Axie Infinity. So we're, we're hoping um, we can attract a lot of the Axie market. Cause so many Filipinos, I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of Filipinos, you know, bought into Axie and then we're really disappointed by the fact that they, you know, paid a thousand dollars to do this. I know people, like one of our team members, or a couple of them, took two or three people and they pooled their money together to get a thousand dollars together. I mean, this is how it works. It's hard to understand this. Like, if you if you are relatively wealthy in in a developing country, but there are people like this that took a lot of money to them. Three people pooled it together just so they could get an Axie team, just so they could try to make breed these axes and make money right and so they're very hopeful that they had found this way to make money but then the whole thing kind of crashed and burned and and um so they're very disappointed and hundreds of thousands of people are looking for new opportunities like that that get them excited that are perhaps better balanced um and more sustainable than what axie was so um, we're going to try to tap into that and let's see what else do we have coming heather just a lot of cool cool new things in the new version it'll it'll be it's going to be easier so for beginners it's going to be easier but it'll ramp up to getting hard so for those of you that played siege worlds before we're trying to make it also a version it won't be ready this time but the next thing we'll be doing is making it so that you can uh we, it'll be more social we'll go back to having a version where 20 people can play at once and it'll just keep getting harder and harder and harder until it's too hard and everybody ties. And then you can basically, as a group, try to see how far you can go. Yeah, w one of the things that I'm pretty bullish about with um, the whole NFT 2.0 thing with Divi and Lightning Works, it would be awesome if, um, like, so for instance, I know uh, for this first collection that you guys are doing, it probably won't be possible to do the Mint in with with e divi because it's it, i don't know if it'll be released or i don't know the details on that or when it'll um when it'll um uh when it'll come out and be available to you know for f folks on the like ethereum side to use in metamask to do mints with but for future mints that would be amazing if um, e Divi was an option for minting either, you know, the comic books or just anything that you guys come out with. And then whatever, um, this is just like kind of a crazy idea. If, if it were like, so the, well, it, one of the things I'm excited about that will be possible with e Divi is that if you minted a collection, um, or if you put out a collection and it gets, let's say it mints out, um, then that's and it was an e divi then you could take that e divi the whoever the creator project creator is they could take that e divi and bridge it over to make it classic divi and then spin up a node with that um, like a master node or throw it into a staking vault and then those rewards from that from that staking or or the master node could be used to then um distribute back to the community uh in the form of like like what you were saying with those in-game rewards and uh, the in-game divvy that gets dropped um when you're like uh, defeating enemies and whatnot um so that's one of the that's one of the things in general that i'm because this could be applied to any project that comes out um and so but that's one of the things that i'm particularly excited about that isn't currently available with like 
So for instance, there's projects like on the Ethereum community that come out and they just kind of spin up their own tokens and try to do things with that. But with having the rock solid base of, of Divi, that makes it very, um, I don't know. It's just very exciting to see that. I don't know if you guys, do Do you guys have like any, any, um, things in the works or plans to incorporate eDivi, um, with like yeah, future yeah. mints or. Yeah. So we've been saying that we're going to give people 10% off the mint if they mint with eDivi. I don't know if we're going to do that on the Genesis, but we'll do that going forward or maybe even 20% off. Um, so we just have to figure out how to make, how to make that happen. One of the problems is like when you're doing st- if you do things with OpenSea, you can't use eDivi. So we decided to not work directly with OpenSea um, for the Mint, but do it ourselves. But again, that's more new technology we have to build. So that's still the plan right now. We have an amazing, amazing new technology where we have a bot that allows people in Discord, if they if a, like a community installs our bot, um, it it's you know the uh, Divi Go bot. In Discord, they can mint NFTs. They can collect NFTs, and we think it's going to be amazing for different NFT projects to be able to allow their users to basically look at their NFTs, trade them with right within their community, and also mint straight into OpenSea from within their Discord communities. But I feel like it would be a lot more valuable if. Because right now, ETV only exists in Ethereum, and it's the minting fees are so high. It would be much more in- valuable to communities that just want to mint stuff in various ways, um, like derivative, derivative IPs or gifts for each other or different types of certificates, if it was on a different blockchain that was so, wasn't so expensive for the gas, like with... With Polygon, it's only two or three cents to mint. You know what costs fifteen dollars on Ethereum, and but so what I'd like to do if I it was a perfect world if we had Divi in Polygon, then I would make that bot. So that's how you have to use it, right? So force we'd give this to people all over the world and you know for free, but they'd have to use P Divi. You know, we'd call the Polygon Divi, but we just don't have it there yet. So. Um, I'm looking forward at some point where when we have Divi and other blockchains, we'll be able to create types of use cases that require lower amounts of gas. And this would be one of them, but we have, we have several different really cool technologies like this that we have in our back pocket that we're finalizing right now that are really quite remarkable and um, targeting different, uh, different uh, projects and different use cases is going to be, you know, a challenge. There's, so it's actually difficult. There's so many cool things that we have all at once. And trying to figure out the use case, it's very difficult to, to, to guess what people are really going to want to use and how they're going to use it. So, um, but the main thing is, I think, that's exciting for the Divi community is that there's soon going to be a Divi Go bot within Discord. Every single crypto and NFT um, in, or NFT, you know, company in the entire space has an, an active discord and so by installing this bot we'll be able to put something in front of them right and the more we can uh, attach divi to that uh the better so keep your eyes out for that and we'll you'll be able to see it probably first in the lightning works discord that's what we'll be testing it wow that sounds really amazing jeff Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for expanding on that. One one thing that is not necessarily related, so I don't I don't want to cut you guys off or anything, but uh, something that we've been working on uh, with a video clip is likely to be coming out tomorrow. Um, so I just want everybody to kind of pay pay attention to the 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 Twitter. Um, It'll be going out on a couple of different platforms, but uh, it, it's just a little, little curated. Tell clip. us, tell us. Well, <laughs> it's not ready in all the formats, so I'm waiting for it to be ready in all the formats. And it's, it's something that I just i I thought was super cool, and I got somebody to help me with it, and it, it's it's going to come out. And it's one of those ones that it's like if something could go viral. It, it might, you know, and I know it won't just because 
you know, the, oh, the luck involved. Positive, but, positive. It will go viral because we're all going to share it. Um, yeah, and I'll blow it up. My DMs are on now, you guys and girls. So everybody's sliding to Heather's DMs. She she asked for it, um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I think we've been we're coming up here on uh, an hour and forty five, and uh, as I always say, we we, we want to keep everybody's time is is valuable, so we want to keep that in mind and uh, let everybody get to their Fridays once the discussion is is done. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a cutoff because people can send me a DM within the hour. Cause I know this is going to be shared and a lot of people listen to it after. So this will be something special just for people that tuned in, um, to get it on the white list. So I'll shut it off at like, uh, four, four thirty or so. Give everybody time to get me a DM. So if you are listening to this as a replay, do not slide into Heather's DMs. Thank you. And Heather, what you need in that DM is a Discord name and a wallet address. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Discord, their Discord username would be ama- amazing. And we can go from there. All right. All right. All right. And thank everybody for, for joining us. Um, I do want to open up the floor to any closing thoughts that anybody has that's either has a speaking role or does not have a speaking role. If you, if you would like to chime in for one last little hoorah, raise your hand. Um, but I know of the, the people that do have speaking privileges, um, closing thoughts kind of go around the room maybe. I just want to say I want to thank you for the idea for the mines. I think it's a good idea, and um, I'll make a note to add them eventually. That would be a cool a cool thing to have in the game. There you go, David. Well, Papa Joe, I think you had a closing thought you wanted to share with us. Just real quick for Heather, I'm not on the on the that particular just. Dis- discord yet i am on the divi discord i sent you a dm just now but i will when i get back to my desk i'll get back in i'll get into that discord and whatnot but uh, just throwing that out there uh, i do appreciate you everything you guys are doing jeff thanks for coming on and giving us all that information i really do appreciate it would love to meet you face to face one of these days and uh you guys oh and just um and thank you yhq um, actually you're your ETH address would be amazing too. So your Discord username, your ETH address, um, and you know what we'll do? We'll get you set up with um, Divigo, uh, a Divigo username too when you're in the Discord. Thank you, YHQ. Sounds good. Thank you for everything you guys are doing. I appreciate it. And as a late addition to the stage, Akbar? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Oh, we got another last minute addition. Rick loves crypto. What's going on? So, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. How many projects can you think of that you can have a beer with the CEO, talk weekly with the founder, um, get the engagement that you get from Divi. Like I, I, and I, listen, I've always been a Litecoin guy. I have a lot of Litecoin family, but this, this project is special. And that's all I want to say. Have a great weekend and go birds. Love football's back and Divi football league. Can't wait till I win it. Oh, thank you so much. Those are great final words for the episode. I think that really kind of encapsulates the vibe of the Divi community. Uh, thank you for the, being here. I did. That reminds me, Rick brought up the, uh, the, the community football league. Um, for those of you who do want to be eligible for the end of the, the season kind of prize winning, 
Uh, I encourage you to, I mean, there's a channel on the discord. There's messages all over the, uh, the, the user, or the, the league homepage. We want to get your, your buy-in so that you can be eligible. Um, the first week of games is starting up. So that's going to be fun. Um, I've tried to throw some trash talk in there, uh, in the, in the discord, but Yes, it's going to be a fun league, and I'm very excited about that as well. So thank you, Rick, for reminding me, because that was something that I'd omitted till now. But uh, I think with that, we, we can now let everybody get to their weekend. Uh, thank you again, Jeff, uh, Heather, everybody who, who is listening. Uh, we, we appreciate you all, and uh, you're a valuable part of this community. So uh, keep, keep being awesome, all of you. Uh, keep being beautiful. That's where uh, a friend of mine used to say in school, they would always give a presentation and say, Oh, you're all so beautiful. And obviously are on Twitter. I have no idea how beautiful or not beautiful you are, but have a wonderful weekend. We love you all. And we will catch up with you uh, next week. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll post the, uh, the next spaces uh, once it's scheduled. And uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, spaces. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ryan. All these people sound beautiful to me. I agree. Beautiful people. The Divi community is a beautiful community. So keep being awesome.